right, so we're going to go over uh, completing the square. Uh, we should really talk about what that is. First of all, what form of a quadratic is this? Do you know? Uh, standard. That's right. This is standard form. And to complete the square, so we'll call it uh, CTS. Okay. Uh, when we take standard form and then we complete the square, what form do we move to? Do you know? Not sure. Well, the goal is to move to vertex form. Okay. And we'll write standard form above. If you recall, it's usually written as f at x equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So there's an a here plus bx plus c. Right? And that's essentially what we have here. The vertex form, and this is when we're doing like translations. That x is equal to a, then bracket x minus h squared plus k. So the a is still involved. We use minus h for part of our vertex form. Okay, so the goal is to go from this form to this form here. Okay, and part of that is called something called um, a perfect square trinomial. We have to create one. So what you'll notice is the a's will actually be the same value. The a is going to be the same, but the h and the k are not the same as our b and our c. Okay, so the very first thing we want to do is we want to take whatever value is in front of the x squared. So what's the coefficient in front of x squared? 8. eight. We want to divide the first two terms by that value. Okay, so we want to divide both of these, this by 8 and this by 8. In fact, we're common factoring 8 out. Okay, so we get f at x is equal to, when we common factor, that value comes to the front. And what will be left inside the brackets? 8x um, squared divided by 8. 8x squared divided by 8? Mm -hmm. Reaches well, x squared? Yeah, that's right. The 8s will essentially cancel out. This one's a little harder. Negative 64 divided by 8. Negative 8? Yeah, negative 8. And technically, there's an x there, so negative 8x. And then we bring down the 4. Okay. The whole reason we did that is because there's a small formula we have to remember. And I'll write it on the side here. Formula is b divided by 2 squared. Once we do that, our b, which used to be negative 64, takes on a new value, 8. This is the b that we want to plug into this equation. So I'm going to take that negative 8. So we have negative 8 divided by 2 and then we square it. So what's negative 8 divided by 2? Negative 4. Yep. And then negative 4 squared. Um, positive 16. Yeah. Now, it's, it's precisely, it is positive 16. Now, in this case, though, we're actually, we need to take this value of 16. We're really looking at the value, and we have to add and subtract it. So I'm going to put plus and minus 16 because we have to add and subtract it into these brackets. So f at x is equal to 8, x squared minus 8x. And we're going to add 16 and subtract 16. If I add and subtract 16, have I changed anything? Not really. No, it's like putting a 0. But the reason we do this is so that we can do a special type of factoring that will give us this type of bracket here. Okay? We're creating a perfect square trinomial. Now, from here, what we want to do is we want to take out the negative value. So the negative value, 16, has to come outside the brackets. But due to distributive property, tactically, I have to multiply all of these by this value to get rid of the brackets. But I only want to take one of them. Out. So because I want to take the negative 16 out, I just have to multiply it by the value at the front, by our 8. So I have to do negative 16 times 8, which we're going to need a calculator for. Oh, negative 128. Perfect. Okay. So. What that leaves us with is 8x squared minus 8x plus 16. Those are the only things inside the bracket. Outside the bracket, what do we get? What did you say? Negative 120. 128? Yeah. Okay. And then plus 4. So now that's good because we can combine it with this value out here. Okay, and let's do that. So next we'll read f at x is equal to 8 squared minus 8x plus 16. 
And when we put these together, it becomes 120, negative 124. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to do here is technically we're going to factor this bracket. But I don't want to go through the process of factoring because I did this purposely to find a shortcut. And what the shortcut allows me to do is I just have to square root the first and last term. So what is the square root of x squared? X? Yeah. And what would the square root of 16 be? 4. 4. Perfect. So what that allows me to do is I'm pretty much set. I go into my vertex form now. So f at x is equal to 8. I only set up one bracket. Remember, vertex form is only one bracket squared. The values become the first and second term in that bracket. So I have x and 4, and the term, or the operation in the middle, will be whatever's on attached to our middle term. So because this is negative 8, we bring a negative down. Okay, And then we bring on what's on the outside, negative 124. So I'm just going to get rid of the color, but we're essentially done. That's our vertex form. f at x is equal to 8, x minus 4 squared, Minus 124. So the vertex is at positive 4 and negative 124. So it's really low. Yes. The vertex, right? And if you notice, our a value was 8 here, and it's still 8 there in our vertex form.